rates of change with respect to time. So when we're talking about rates of change, this is dealing with calculus. And the best way to probably look at this is just with an example. So let's say we have the volume of water in a tank is given by V equals 40 pi times 50 minus T, where this is measured in meters cubed as it's a volume. Now, because we're dealing with volume, if we found the derivative of this with respect to time, as in dV dt, this would give us the rate of flow of the volume measured in meters cubed per whatever the time interval was. In this case, we're using minutes. So your expression for dV dt would tell you the rate of flow measured in meters cubed per minute. So first question is how much water is in the tank initially? How much water is in the tank initially? And translate that to maths. It's asking for the volume when t equals zero. And we can do that just by subbing in t equals zero into our volume equation. So we just get v equals 40 pi times 50 minus zero. So we just get the volume being 2000 pi, and that'd be measured in meters cubed. Second part, asked to find the rate in which the, the water flows from the tank like we've already spoken about, the maths, translating that into maths, just wants us to find dV dt. So we can just go ahead and differentiate our function. So dV dt is going to equal to, well, this first term would just cancel out. If we expanded it, then differentiate it because it's a constant. And then our next term is minus 40 pi t. And the derivative of minus 40 pi t is just minus 40 pi. And because this term does not have a t in it, it means that the rate of change is not dependent on the time, and it actually means that the rate of change of the volume is constant. And last part of the question is asking us how much time for the tank to empty? So it's actually asking how long will it take? So we have to the time for the tank to empty. That means when the volume is equal to zero. So again, we can just use our initial equation and just sub in those values in. So V is zero. So we're left with 40 pi outside of 50 minus T. And dividing both sides by 40 pi will give us 50 minus T equals zero. And adding T to both sides is just going to give us T equals 50. And this was measured in minutes, so we get 50 minutes for the tank to fully empty. Let's look at one more example. Let's say we had an electric current. Electric current given by dQ dt. So it's already a rate. And Q would represent the quantity of charge, which is given by t cubed minus 6t squared plus 12t plus 5. So this was the quantity of charge. And firstly, we're asked to find the current, so we're after the current, and it's important to know what each of the formulas represent. So Q represented charge and dQ dt represented current. So if we're after the current, that means we're after dQ dt, and specifically uh, when time was equal to 0 0.5 seconds. So the first thing we need to do is integrate, sorry, differentiate our function to get an expression for dq dt. So we're going to do that. So we get dq dt. So we'll differentiate. So we get 3t 
squared minus 12t plus 12. And that's our expression for our current. And we can just go ahead and sub a half in there. So we get 3 times a half squared minus 12 times a half plus 12. And doing that, we should get 6.75. And this is actually measured in amps, which would be the capital A. And unlike the previous question, the, the rate of change was dependent on the time. So for different values of time, um, this rate of change is, is different. All right. For our second part, we're after the initial, the initial charge. So charge is measured by Q. So that means we're after Q. And initial means that's when t equals zero. So all we have to do is just find q when t is zero. So we're going to have zero cubed minus six times zero squared plus 12 times zero plus five. And that's just going to give us q is equal to five. And this will be uh, measured with a capital C, the charge. The last part, we're after when the current stops flowing. So current, remember, was dq dt. So that's what we're after. So we're after the current. So we're after dq dt. So when it's, sorry, we're after when the current stops flowing. So if it stops flowing, that means it has to be zero. And when means we're after the time. So that means we just sub those values in to our expression for the derivative. So we get zero equals three t squared minus 12 t plus 12. So we can divide everything by three. So we'll get t squared minus four t plus four equals zero. And it's a quadratic, so we can factorize here. After two values that multiply to 4 and add up to minus 4, so it'll just be minus 2 and minus 2. So that means t has to be equal to 2 seconds.